Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm just gonna be running through the best video settings for the new Sony a7C. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the settings. All right, so first things first, we're just gonna turn our camera on and we're just gonna flip this switch here to on. Uh, next step is we're just gonna jump over to menu and make sure that your camera is set to video mode and not photo mode or SNQ. So the first page on the menu is my menu settings. We won't really do anything here. But something that Sony did add with this camera and with kind of the newer models is these main setting channels. And honestly, these are really the only settings that you'll need. Uh, we're gonna change a few others, but for the most part, you should just be working in and out of this screen. So when we click over, the first option is to change your frame rate. Now, frame rates get a little bit complicated if you're a beginner. But basically, when I'm using this camera, I'm primarily using uh, 4K 60. Using a frame rate of 60 just basically allows me to slow my clips down later in post. So even though sometimes I'm not slowing my clips down, it just gives me that option. And it's just really nice to have that option. So in my opinion, I always shoot in 60. And then next up is gonna be your shutter speed. Now, shutter speed, ISO, and aperture all kind of change depending on certain lighting situations. So there's not like one thing fits all or one good setting fits all. And I actually have a video breaking down how to kind of balance these settings with each other. So if you do wanna go check that out, you are more than welcome to, and that video will be right here. Next up is white balance, and I generally shoot in auto white balance. These cameras are super good at just doing white balance automatically, so I kind of put my faith in the camera and I just let it do it itself. The next thing is picture profile, and generally when I'm using this camera, I'm not really using a picture profile. If I'm doing a customer shoot, I will be using picture profile 10, and I'm gonna change the gamma to S-Log3. This basically just gives me the ability to shoot an S-Log3 on this camera. If I don't want to color grade a whole lot after, I usually just keep picture profile off, make some minor like tone adjustments or some saturation adjustments later on if I do shoot with my picture profile off. All right, here's where we kind of get into the meat and potatoes, uh, the actual recording settings. So for me and for this camera, I'm gonna be shooting in XAVCS 4K, and I'm gonna be shooting at 200M422 10-bit. The reason I don't shoot in XAVC HS is specifically because XAVCS is basically H264 and HS is basically H265. HS technically gives you smaller file sizes, but based on my experience and considering that I edit most of my stuff in Premiere, I generally have some issues uh, editing with H.265 files in Premiere. It just slows down my stuff like immensely and it's super frustrating. And the thing is, is that when you are exporting, most of the time you're gonna be exporting in H.264 anyway. And when you do make that final export, even if you shot in H.265, when you do make that final export, it's gonna look very indistinguishable from each other. Like they're gonna look very similar. So in my opinion, there's not a lot of reason. Yes, the XAVCS 4K gives me larger file sizes, but if I have a 512 gigabyte memory card in my camera, that's not really something that I have to be worrying about. And especially since I carry around about 10 memory cards during shoots, it's really not an issue for me to have larger file sizes. And obviously everybody has their own personal preference, but regardless, these two settings are gonna grant you the best possible video quality for this camera. So I think either way you go is gonna render some really, really clean looking video images. Next up, I have assist off, and then my gamma display assist type is set for S-Log3. Proxy recording is something that I never use. Uh, wind noise reduction, I just have set to auto. And as you can see, the microphone is currently picking up my audio levels right now. And so you can kind of change that depending on you know, what audio levels you wanna pick up with this camera if you are using the built-in mic in the camera. And then we're gonna jump down to main two. Uh, log shooting settings, I just have it turned off on here. 
APS-C shooting. Uh, this is going to basically enter you into crop mode or APS-C mode. Uh, basically gives you, I think, a 1.7 times crop. And then right here is your formatting, so you can format your memory card. Over here is your shoot mode, and that basically just shows you what mode you're shooting in. Next up, we can name our files here, and then here is steady shot. So there's three different options for steady shot on this camera, and it is active, standard, and off. Off obviously is off. Standard is just kind of a basic version of steady shot. And then active is usually what I have mine set to. Imagine if you're filming something without a gimbal and you're kind of walking along a path or potentially even moving faster than that, you'd essentially turn on steady shot and that would just reduce the shake by a ton. If you go down again, here is the focus area. I personally prefer wide. It's really kind of personal preference or depending on what you're filming. Next up is subject recognition. Uh, if I'm filming people or animals or honestly really anything, I have this turned on. I like to have it turned on because uh, it can recognize a subject and it can just track it better if it's moving throughout the screen. And then the recognition target is gonna be based on what you're shooting. Uh, so you can really kind of to change it depending. I personally just keep it on human. I've never really gotten into it and really tested the different things. I imagine like if you're a bird photographer or a wildlife photographer, it's probably extremely beneficial to change that. And then we're gonna get into kind of the main uh, video screen, which a lot of these we already went over. So file format is gonna be, um, you know, what you're shooting in. Again, I said XAVC. S 4K um, and then movie settings is going to be your frame rate and your kind of bit rate and uh, compression and stuff. Next up we can jump into S and Q settings because this is technically slow motion video. If you change your dial over here to S and Q mode that is going to be what enables you to shoot in S and Q mode and basically S and Q mode is just slow motion mode and so you can go into your S and Q settings and you can change the highest record setting that you can do is 140M, 422, 10-bit. And so that's what I have selected. And then your frame rate recording settings, you can see like the difference that it would make times 2.5 slow motion. This would be basically not slow motion. This would be normal speed. And then this would be times two because it's double this number. Time-lapse settings are sort of similar, sort of not. So basically if you jump in here, frame rate settings, so this is the frame rate that your time-lapse will be recorded in. So you could do 60, you could do 24, you could do 30. I personally would just leave it at 30. And then this number is gonna be your interval between shots. So we can add all the way up to five. Essentially this would mean that there would be a photo taken every five seconds or so. And you can even see down here, shooting time required for five second movie recording would be about 12 minutes. So there would be 30 different frames in one second of your final time-lapse video. But as you can see, as you go down on the number, that number decreases. So this would only take five minutes to get a five second recording. And then record settings are similar as to the S and Q settings. Um, obviously you can set it to as high as you want. To get the best possible uh, video settings though, it would be 140, 422, and 10-bit. Honestly, the rest of the settings in this menu are very like user preference. I never really go into these when it comes to just shooting video. A lot of these other settings I think can be covered in other videos, but when it comes to like, if you wanna just get your camera and get it out of the box and start shooting, these are what settings I would use. Anyways, that's gonna do it for me. If you guys have any other questions or if there's something that I didn't cover that you were hoping that would be covered, please leave that in the comments down below. I'll be trying to answer any questions like that that you guys have. So yeah, anyways, I will see you in the next video. Peace.